Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. So glad you're here. So, so glad you're here. Excited to do this. I love hanging out with you guys. We have an absolute blast. I've been just so excited because we've been able to go live with you so much lately and it's been a blast. And I uh, thought we'd come on today and just kind of chit chat about whatever you want, answer questions, take suggestions, discuss anything you want within relative reason. And uh, just have fun on our, hopefully for you too, day off. And if not, get back to work. Just kidding. Don't, unless you're going to, unless you need to. You need. You know what you need to do. <laughs> but seriously, just thank you for being there. And uh, old radios, welcome in. Um, I saw them come in. I have not had a chance to look in depth at my email, but um, I will do so. I will. Have, in fact, you know what? Let's do a live review right now. This is sort of dangerous, but I trust you. <laughs> so, although you said you kind of freaked me out when you're like, rip your inbox. So I don't know what that means. I'm hoping it means just that the emails are containing a lot of attachments. So let's take a look. All right. By the way, I'm always interested to see, you know, you guys vinyl setups and equipment you find and things. It's fascinating. Always want this to be a two-way street, right? I don't want to just sit there and talk at people. I would like to hear more so from anybody that wants to, you know, chat back or, you know, comment or whatever. Super Prince, welcome in. Thank you very much for sending that over. I'm just looking at old radio's email right now. Oh, wow, dude, this is cool. Wow. I'm looking at this video, there's a uh, video equipment. This is super cool. Oh, dude, those vintage tape decks with the exposed drum, especially the one on the right in this picture. What is that? AV3600. That is so cool. That is absolute. Wow. Dude, you have an amazing collection. Okay. You said rip your inbox because of how cool and how many items you were sending. So I think that's awesome. Is this a Umatic? Oh, no, that's a VHS, a top loader. Really cool. If you guys are just joining, I'm checking out an email uh, that was sent my way. That is super cool. Dude, those are amazing. Really, really cool. And Super Prince, the uh, the music you said, thank you so much. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, uh, but I want to absolutely. That's a good album. I'm kind of a Greatest Hits fan uh, for those guys. So it's, uh, you know, when it comes to Dire Straits, I do want to hear it. And I think that that album is probably, you know, perfectly, you know, for me anyway. <laughs> So it's come more. I've got two more picks to send. That's awesome. So today has been a fun day for me. It's been a very fun day. Welcome in, everybody. Hey, Jaden, welcome in. I really appreciate everybody joining. It's been a great vinyl day because, and this was filmed. It's actually going to be posted probably tonight, hopefully tonight, if not tomorrow. Frisco Gaming, welcome in. Ralph, welcome in. Um, yeah, it is an awesome album that uh, Dire Straits. Absolutely. I uh, started off by going to um, the Lakeland Antique Mall. And if you follow or watch videos by Adam the Woo here on YouTube, as do I, um, he goes there quite often. They have not just like Antique Mall stuff, um, but they have like Disney World ride vehicles, de decommissioned Everything from the hotels, from the phones, to the carpets, to the chairs, the tables, Disney art, posters, um, to one-of-a-kind, you know, pieces from the parks, props. If you're a Disney nerd, it is an absolute, you know, goldmine. You can pick up stuff so cheap, too. I picked up um, some Epcot Food and Garden Festival uh, decorations, some little cool things, little orange and stuff, made by... The Walt Disney, you know, prop department, scenery and prop department, and uh, for like a buck or less than five bucks, a couple bucks. But when it comes to vinyl, you're gonna find some stuff there you'll never find anywhere else because, as I say in the video, because of the proximity to the Disney parks here, the antique stores and the thrift stores in the area just have more Disney stuff, and they have Disney stuff you're not gonna find anywhere. So I was on a mission today, whether or not I was successful. In this endeavor, I'm not going to spill the beans on here. I did hold up one of the records that I did find today. That's a little sneak peek. Uh, but got some CDs, got some records. After I went to Lakeland, went out to Tampa for a very cool thing. You're gonna 
Trust me, you don't want to watch that. And while I was out in Tampa, I got some more stuff. And then uh, it's a good two-hour drive back to Orlando from Tampa, especially depending on – it could be like four hours depending on traffic. But today wasn't – I-4 wasn't too rough and got back into town. And, um, um, and now I'm on with you guys, So which I loved. I just got done right before this doing the haul shot, showing the haul of the, of the day, the things that I picked up. And once I get the edited and posted, you'll be able to see the whole adventure and, and whatnot. But back to my thought, what was my mission for today? You ever go out looking for records and you're like on a mission. You're like, I'm looking for something. Uh, today, I really wanted to find a copy of the um, uh, Country Bear Jamboree on vinyl, the soundtrack to the attraction, which, you know, is about to close here in Florida. It was an opening day 1971 attraction and it has its own soundtrack on vinyl, and it's it's a pricey one. You look on eBay, you're gonna pay $70, $75 and more for that record. But I remember there was one of the vendors at a lot of Disney stuff out at the Lakeland Antique Mall, uh, Antique, yeah, Antique Mall, and he had it. So, or she had it, whoever owns that booth had it. So I wanted to go back out and look. So that was the whole thing. Now I knew going in that it could be pricey. But right now, that record could be a good purchase was my thought process. So did I find it? Did I get it? Or did I go away empty-handed? Again, stay tuned to the next regular episode, which hopefully will be posted tonight, if not tomorrow, of Recordology, where we go check that out. In the meantime, I want to hang here with you guys, talk about another record. This one is the Pocahontas one I have in the thumbnail. And I picked this up for what seemed too good to be true. Was it too good to be true? Kind of. And I'll explain that in a minute. But welcome in to everybody that I haven't said hello to yet. Jaden Good, welcome in. It's going wonderful. Very blessed and thankful. Hope you are as well. Um, listening to Michael Jackson's Bad album on cassette. Yes! I love that album. That tape, I wore out as a kid. I wore out. Little Recordology had his grubby little paw holding the little sharp Walkman-esque device and played that thing out. I literally wore it out and bought it. I had to get another one. And the $10 investment to buy another tape was significant for, you know, eight-year-old me or however old I was. But I loved that album. There were like certain like key albums that as a kid, before I got into music or into audio, way before I got into audio equipment, that I, I had, I had, I could count it on one hand. There's a video or a, somewhere I heard or saw myself recently, my parents had a VHS camcorder, so they're filming a lot, uh, where I was saying, I have five tapes, I have, or five or six tapes. And that was my collection. And I was perfectly happy. I had Michael Jackson's Bad. I had a Christian rock tape that my aunt had get, got me for my birthday called DeGarmo and Key. And I need to pick that up again. It's long gone. DeGarmo and Key. Um, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Very 80s sounding rock. And um, eventually I had the cocktail soundtrack because everybody, when I was in sixth grade, Kokomo was the thing. It was so, I was like probably the first hit song that I remember just kind of sweeping the nation as it were. And the only way to get that song was on the cocktail soundtrack. I think it was a Tom Cruise movie. But that was the only song on there I listened to. It was the only place you could listen to Kokomo. And then I had New Kids on the Block. I should really put together this collection of these five tapes I had. And a New Kids on the Block. And there was one more. I had, uh, uh, what was it? Oh, Pump Up the Jam. But what was that? Technotronic or something? Pump Up the Jam. Pump Up the Jam. And that was it. That was my music collection, you know. Back then, it wasn't like I woke up and listened to music every day. I was a kid. You know, I listened to music maybe once, and then three weeks goes by before I listen to anything else. And I was more fascinated, I think, with the radio and the idea of picking up stations from far away. I don't know how I got on that tangent. But, oh, Michael Jackson's bad. Now, fast forward to today, and I own Michael Jackson's bad yet again. This is actually a really good segue into the record I bought today. See if I can actually find it. It would be great if I could find the visual aid while I'm talking about it. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. 
my pop music collection is not that big, so it shouldn't be hard to find. It's literally, but well, you can't quite see it, but it's not even a full crate. Here it is. Michael Jackson's bad. Picture disc. <gasps> Picture disc. You're not supposed to listen to that. You're supposed to hang it on your wall. Those sound like crap. There's the back. Iconic. I remember as a kid seeing the uh, long box of the cassette and a CD even on the store on the store shelves and just being enthralled with that, how cool it was. And um, yeah, just played it to death. And by the way, picture this sound actually really good. There's more surface noise because of the plastic they use, but they sound fine. They have bass. They have good stereo separation. They sound better than you think they do. So if you find an album on picture disc, listen to it. Don't just hang it on the wall. I'm going to use that segue before I forget. So one of the records I picked up today was this Pocahontas picture disc. And Disney's issuing, you know, this is sort of the mainstay for Disney soundtracks. Out Al and albums now is these picture discs. Besides that, they have like these deluxe LP sets where they press on, you know, standard vinyl pressings. But this is sort of the bread and butter for Disney vinyl. These picture discs. And I think they're fantastic. I love them. They're really cool. Anyway, so I picked this one up today. Where's the sleeve for it? Did I oh, I think I might have. I already threw that away. It's kind of grungy. $3.99. I'm like, are you crazy? $3.99? Are you out of your mind? I'm like, that's really good price. These are minimum $25. It wasn't new. It was used. But even still... $15 minimum for a picture disc, uh, Disney picture disc, I would say. So $3.99, I'm like, it looks like it's in good condition. It's a newer, you know, picture disc. It hasn't been discolored yet. The older 80s picture discs, the, the clear plastic cover starts to yellow with time if it's exposed to UV light. So keep your picture disc. That's a good reason not to hang up your picture discs because they, they get yellow. And, and if you keep them sleeved and, you know, hidden from light, they're going to last and look a lot better. So I was thinking, wow, and, I, and like I've said before, and I did it again today, I'm terrible, absolutely terrible about checking out my records and CDs to make sure they're not scratched and damaged and destroyed, or even that the right record is in the sleeve before I go home. I'm terrible at that. So I've gone home with empty sleeves. I'm. You ever see them check at the counter? Half of the time, they're checking to make sure you're not shoplifting. The other half of the time, they're checking for doofuses who don't even bother to verify that the record they think they're getting is really in there. So I just threw this in, you know, my shopping bag and was, oh, I can't believe this great deal. And keep looking. So I get home and I look at the label. And this, this place I went to in Tampa today has a really cool system where they, they have a sticker that says, do not open. You bring to the counter if you want to open and inspect it. So kind of annoying for some smart people that will check their records. For people like me, I didn't even notice that because I don't even think to open it, like I said. But when I got home, I looked at that label and it has a grading system. It says VG, VG plus or other, or whatever. Uh, talks about what is new or used and any notes. This one said other and the note was warped. Good for art only or sold as art piece only. And I was like, great, it's destroyed. But it didn't seem like, I mean, some records you know, like really you could tell they're warped even in the packaging. This one seemed flat. I put it on my turntable when I got home. That's why I keep looking over here. The U-turn's right here. And played it. It's got a little warp, so the, the tone arm's kind of got a little bit of a, not even a that big of one, just kind of a very gentle bit of a warp. I think it must have flattened out since they sold it. My wife, I told my wife, I was like, why do you think they did that? She's like, well, maybe it was worse. And then over time, you know, sometimes when you stack records, those warps can get better. So. If it was packed tightly, that could explain it. So it's a good record. Even knowing about the warp now, it's still a killer price. So I got some really good deals. And again, check out that video I'm going to post later if you want to see it. Also, if you, while I'm in promotional mode here, if you want to see some of the other adventures we've been on outside of the world of recordology, uh, more couples vlogging, animal adventures, and you know, going out and doing events and things, or just whatever you know it is that we do to occupy our free time, check out my wife's channel, Rain's Place. I put a link in the uh, live thread here. If you scroll to the top, it's the first comment. I don't think I can pin a live stream comment, uh, but uh, youtube.com forward slash at Rain's Place. The at symbol 
R-A-I-N-S-P-L-A-C-E. And uh, yeah, so the, totally different content over there. She posts, you know, everything from exploration to, you know, safari type stuff to travel. And it's, it's a blast, totally different you know, side of the uh, world. But if you guys would go over there and subscribe, that would be great. Obviously, if you haven't subscribed to us, although the people that make it into these lives, I, I feel like are our inner circle subscribe people. If you're watching the replay and not all these lives make it to, to replay mode, but if you're watching it and it's posted, uh, consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps us out. All right, let me get caught back up on comments. Mr. Londell's Groovy Movies. Haven't seen you in a while, Mr. Londell. Greetings and felicitations. Hip, hip, hurrah, tally-ho, and to you as well. That's great. Welcome in. Second Chance Junkyard, I'm keeping myself warm over here. I've heard that a lot of people are struggling in that regard. I uh, got a video from my son this morning, and he's like, it's negative three here in Colorado, and I'm like, you know, they invented these warmer places. I, I love teasing people about that. I was teasing somebody at work about that. They were up north someplace. And I was saying, yeah, still palm trees, blue sky, 78 degrees today. It was like a couple days ago. And they're like, yeah, but um, he was teasing me. Let's just say he was teasing me. I'm not going to say any more. <laughs> we were joshing each other. But I, it has been kind of fun teasing people about it. I guess the cold was too much cold for me. Glad to be in the warmth, although it did get down to a balmy, what is it, like 58 right now? So we're suffering here in Florida, too. Uh, definitely. That's a that's rough, you know. Had to turn the air conditioner off. That's how bad it's gotten. Frisco Gaming, the record I want to have is Godzilla soundtrack from 1954. That would be awesome. I love the, I love the emoji. I'm glad that that comes through. That's really cool. Ty, welcome in. I got some good albums today, too. Found some great rock and country CDs. And I even found a Buck Owens cassette tape at a thrift, a set, a cassette tape box set. Wow, at a thrift store. So, Ty, I you may or may not know this, but I'm a country fan as well. I, I want to show you something I got, but I can't yet. Watch the show. I'm going to post later. I definitely spent some time in the country western section and found some cool stuff. Things I saw today and didn't pick up in the country world. Uh, I, I think I saw some Buck Owens there. Um, I saw some Cowboy Copas and I love that old country, Hank Williams, you know, not junior, but senior love that stuff. So that's really cool. Hi from the UK. First time here on the live feeds, Paul, welcome in. I'm really glad that you're here. What an honor to have you here. That's great. Love it. What are you looking for? Uh, vinyl wise or audio wise, or what are you interested in? Love to hear all about it. Second chance junkyard. I've got quite a lot of records. I would like to have, don't we all? But there are all too many to list here. And that's just it. There's The list is growing. In fact, my it's so funny. My wife loves to tease me and remind me that when I was pitching the idea of starting a vinyl collection, which for me is fairly recent, 2014, 15, I didn't have a single record. I ended up having some in the basement. I didn't know, but I didn't consciously know I had any records. And I told her, I said, look, I just want to get some Glenn Miller vinyl, just a few records. This is the analogy. I wanted like a, two inches of records sitting vertically on the shelf. Not much shelf space, a little record player, cheap one, it's fine. And that's it. That's all I want, just a couple records. And now I have grown the collection to, um, There's let's just say there's some crates in here. There's some crates, there's some boxes and things. And I am currently pretty capped out on, on space. I had to do one of those shuffles where you kind of move things from here to there and every which way to make room for the new acquisitions. And I'm acquisitioning faster than I'm uh, able to support storing. So I would like to think that I'm going to become more selective. And I only got less than a handful of records today. I got more, I got more CDs than I got records. Um, so I'm not bringing home like 30 at a time, but I'll get, get records as gifts. Viewers send records. And by the way, I love that. That's great. Don't listen to this. If you're thinking about sending something, I need, I always need more. <laughs> I was just teasing, but I appreciate it very much. But, you know, in terms of what I'm buying myself, I feel like I really need to slow it down because I don't need to bulk up the collection anymore. I don't need to, I've got, 
I think all the main things I really want right now, it's fun to kind of hone in on a single record, like that Country Bears record that I've been looking for. And did I find it today or did I not? And uh, really kind of go after that. But when I started getting interested in Patsy Cline, you know, I was I was acquiring what ended up, you know, at the end of the day, 12 inch records of Patsy Cline's are about about a half a crate, you know, almost a half a crate. Peggy Lee, that was like a New Year's vinyl resolution a year or two ago. Peggy Lee's also about half a crate. Jackie Gleason is probably a third of a crate. And um, Glenn Miller, of course, is more than a crate. Elvis needs, I need to work on the Elvis collection. I did pick up Kissing Cousin soundtrack, got Flaming Star, I've got Blue Hawaii, I've got um, the Mexico one and some others. I need the Aloha from Hawaii. And that's just the 12 inch record. So there's always work to be done. I need to find, and ultimately I just need more crates. I need to somehow find a place to squirrel away more records. So there you go. Old radios. I got a camera, email, and antique phonograph email I'll send you. Okay, cool. I love seeing that stuff. It's super cool. Ivy Poison. Welcome in. A few days ago, had a really great score at one of my local Goodwills. I ended up finding 15 records of interest on that trip. Ones of note include Cindy Lauper's album, She's So Unusual, and an Elvis album. Very cool. I had that Cindy. I think I had that Cindy Lauper. Is that that one where she's on the cover? She's kind of dancing like this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to end up memed for that. My, if I do stupid stuff like that, my son's always like, Dad, you're memeing yourself. Um, an Elvis album, like I said, love Elvis stuff. Can't go wrong. Super Prince, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to seeing that email. I'm snowed in till Tuesday, old radio says. This has been a long, long week. I don't disagree. Okay, Super Prince, you sent an email. Let me look. Oh, we got a setup video. I will check this out. I need to do one of those videos where, um, uh, like, what's his name? The Channel 33 RPM, where they do the record re room reviews. That'd be fun. I need to, I need to like, have you guys and gals all send in pictures, videos, whatever of your, of your setup. I don't have the sound on, but I'm looking at the video. Dang, dude, that is a lot. Are those all hooked up? All those aren't hooked up. Those cassette decks aren't hooked up, are they? It looks like a store. Wow. I can't wait to listen. You're probably explaining what I'm looking at, but wow, dude. What? That tape deck up top. Wow. TAC Tape Deck Central. I got to check that out in more detail. That's cool, dude. Thanks for sending that. Dun, 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 dun. James says, scared to play my Walt Disney records on my new Victrola suitcase record player. What is your opinion? James unloads with the, with the sensitive subject, not to me, but to everybody out there who gets pounded over the head with, oh, those Crosleys and Victrolas, they'll destroy your records. Here's the way I personally do it. A suitcase player is designed to track at a heavier weight than a higher end turntable because the cartridge they use requires more downforce. The side effect of that is, you know, the more downforce on the record, the faster it's going to wear out. Now, how do you, there's a gray line between damaging a record and wearing it out faster because even the gentlest highest end record player is slowly eating away at every record it will wear out at some point i stop short of saying damage because it to me it's not damage whatsoever that being said my favorite records i would play on a higher end record player if i could but there was a lot of time when i didn't have that option so my vote has always been play your records enjoy your records and don't get too caught up that this is such a valuable record that it needs to be stored away. And then I, and I've been scolded by so many people over the years that I used to say, there's no, that all of records are relatively not valuable 
uh, except for the information that they contain, the enjoyment that you can have. And I know there are valuable records, of course, but I would say for the majority of records and things that are out there commercially available that you might as well enjoy them because there's millions of copies of most records. So unless you have a super rare copy, you know, play it, enjoy it, and uh, realize that, you know, after playing your record, you know, 300 times on a suitcase, it may have more wear than one that doesn't is it doesn't track that heavy, but it doesn't damage it. I don't believe that they damage it. In fact, we've you know proven that and talked about that at nauseum. So I would say play the record, enjoy the record, and tell me what Disney records you have because I love to hear about it. Do I have any bluegrass? I was just listening to Billy Strings today. Um, I need more bluegrass. I have bluegrass on tape. My wife's grandfather was a very good bluegrass player um, and country player, uh, guitar player. My dad, too, is a fantastic guitar player. But on vinyl, I've got a whole country and western. We have both kinds, country and western. I have a lot of uh, a record by two-thirds of a crate dedicated to country and western music, especially love the older stuff. So there is some uh, bluegrass in there. About, oh gosh, early 90s, my family, when I was a teenager, started going to Branson, Missouri, which is sort of, and they get like 5 million, or they used to get 5 million tourists a year. Pretty much that little town got as many tourists as the entire state of Colorado in a year. And um, just fantastic bluegrass music up and down that place. Country music, bluegrass music, Broadway music. Now every kind of music is there. But theme parks like Silver Dollar City, which is basically Dollywood, but the West Coast, not West Coast because it's the Midwest, but the West version of Dollywood owned by the same company. In fact, Dollywood used to be Silver Dollar City East, as it were, and uh, Silver Dollar City, as it's still known in Branson, there's bluegrass filtering in from every nook and cranny. I love it. I have a few CDs. I do have a few CDs. I need to get more. I do... When it comes to bl bluegrass music, I'm I don't know any. I, Billy Strings is kind of the artist that comes to mind, um, and then I think about you know vintage because bluegrass as a genre has only existed since like the '40s. So it's like it, I don't know many of the artists beyond the originators of the genre. Storage is limited. Super brands. It always seems that way. Absolutely. Every and it's second chance has the same problem. Storage is my sometimes got to go through stuff. And I tried to, uh, to do that. I try when I recently I had a pet project a couple of days ago, I just got this hankering to go through my CDs. I don't know if I talked about it on the channel, but I went through my CDs and I organized them again because I had them organized by genre, which is the way I organize my records. And eventually they all got mixed up, especially in the move. They got all mixed up. We moved out here from Colorado and um, in the process of doing so, there was a lot of CDs I've been lugging around for decades now and never listened to and probably never will. And I'm like, why am I holding on to this? So, you know, they, they went on to uh, a new place because I don't need to keep every little thing. I have tubs full of blank CDRs with handwritten things that were, little, you know, snippets of things. And uh, eventually I need to go through those as well. Did you get the reissue of Steely Dan's Aja? I think it sounds pretty good. I have not. DJ Smudge. I like that. That's cool. Welcome in. How is it? Is it good? I need shelves big time. I was just thinking that this week. I need, I've got one of these Walmart $39 pressed wood in mocha colored shelves. And uh, back in uh, Colorado, I had purchased a metal commercial grade. It's like the kind of wire rack that commercial kitchens have where the shelves were like three feet deep and they could support like 900 pounds per shelf. And I was using that to store some crates at sort of crate level and then equipment above and below. And that didn't come with us to Florida. Uh, there's a storage closet that takes the space of that or takes place of that. 
And all that to say, I always need more shelves. So I uh, definitely do. And I'm sure that uh, what I've got on these shelves exceeds the weight recommendation. I always love when you get that cheap press. And it's just, you know, sawdust pressed into shapes with a cheap veneer over it. But it's always like weight limit, seven pounds. It's like, it's going to be more than seven pounds, right? So I'll take the risk. Uh, that being said, I try to go heavier to lighter, depending on how they're stacked. Second chance says old videos are here. Okay, you're talking to each other. That's cool. Hope to expand more subjects at a later date. All is hooked up in that. Holy moly, how do you switch? Do you have to like pull cables and, and do that? Or do you have like a switch hooked up? Thanks to this craptacular weather. I like that. Craptacular. What are you talking about? It's blue skies and sunny here. It's not craptacular. Oh, you mean other places? Just teasing. Like I said, it's been kind of chilly. It's down to like 58. I don't know how we're going to manage. 55 now. Might have to put on a jacket. It's rough. Oh, boy. Let's see here. Uh, Ivy Poison says, I've been getting into 45s recently. My favorite one I own is Michael Jackson's and Paul McCartney's. The girl is mine. Yes. Even has a picture sleeve. Wow. That was a Goodwill find. That's amazing to find pop music at a Goodwill. I have also a Michael Jackson. I need to organize my 45s now. Um, with a picture sleeve. Which I won't be able to find now that I want to talk about it. Come on. Where is it? Is this it? No. I really need to organize this stuff. Organizing is a constant battle. Okay. I got this as a viewer gift a couple years ago. This is cool. It's a seven inch Barry Manilow picture disc. Very cool. At the Copa. Doesn't have Copa Cabana on it. It has, this is live in Britain. Barry Manilow, Stay, and Nickels and Dimes. Here's an 80s picture. Oh, I found it. Okay, cool. This isn't it, but I found it underneath it. Wang Chung. Everybody Wang Chung tonight. Oh, it takes me straight back to my childhood. This is my MJ picture sleeve. I picked this up at an antique store back in Denver. I paid $3 for this. The way you make me feel tonight. From the Bad Album. I love how 45s were kind of like advertisements for the full album. Like, if you like this sampler, get the full album from the upcoming Bad album. This literally says, taken from Michael Jackson's Bad LP on Epic Records, cassettes and compact discs on the Epic label. Man, so nostalgic. So, yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you said you had the Paul McCartney one, The Girl Is Mine. I think they had a, got into a feud. It wasn't it about the Beatles ownership rights because Michael had bought like the rights to some Beatles music or the Beatles music and didn't like that fact. Okay, fun fact. One of my most successful shorts of all time. I think it has like a quarter of a million views. Now you maybe say that's one of your successful videos because a lot of channels get millions of views. But for me, it was a successful short and it continues to perform thousands of views every month was me playing this on a school classroom record player on delicious vinyl, Tone Loke, singing Wild Thing. Now, as a kid growing up, I loved the sound of this. That was a naughty record for me. That was not one that I was allowed to have. The Heat is on, Beverly Hills Cop. I don't know why I'm showing these now. I need to do a show on postcard records. This is a modern postcard record. Significant wear on this does not sound wonderful. This company, Vinyl Post, we did a video a couple of years ago, um, stopped pressing the record, or yeah, stopped pressing the music on the colored postcard and started sending everybody a blank postcard. And then in the absence of a picture, they could press higher quality sound. So this is what they went to. Like more of, I think this is just a sheet of plastic. This isn't paper. So it sounds better, but you lost the, 
postcard aspect of it. Still an interesting thing. And it was like up and coming artists. A lot of these uh, Disney book and record sets. This one's separated currently from its record. It's in here somewhere. The band from the UK, Emile's telegraphic transmission device. These guys were awesome, reached out to me and sent me a bunch of their music. Okay, let's see here. Sorry, we're just having show and tell time. I loved show and tell as a kid. Boy, it's been a while since we showed this on the channel. This is a steel or aluminum uh, transcription disc. And you can see the protective seal around the edge. Rockola recording disc. And the idea with this, I think these were uh, memories and sound. It was like, I think a kiosk where you would go and, you know, put some money in, make a recording. You can smell, it smells like a magic marker, the lacquer decaying on here slowly it becomes sticky and gooey it's still playable this one isn't that bad i've got one from my uncle's childhood where it was actually a recital a clarinet recital that thing is so funky smelling that um it has to stay sealed so it's really decaying this is the postcard to that record that was just a plain white sheet so they give you the postcard and then you know the record disc is separate. Here's another uh, interesting historical piece, Voiceograph. This is definitely from a kiosk. Look at that. Look at the cracks in that thing. Look at that. I was reading a Facebook post recently in some group that was talking about these, and they were like, transfer your non-shellac discs, any paper or cardstock discs, ASAP. Because apparently what happens is paper discs like this, just cardstock. It's like cardboard with, you know, it's basically a picture disc kind of technology here where you've got, let's see if I can get the light again. You've got a, a thin layer over a, a substrate. In this case, the substrate is paper and exposed on the edges and in the hub there. So what happens is it soaks up moisture, especially in humid places like this. And when it expands from that moisture, it cracks the outer edge, which is where the sound is stored. So it goes like, this is probably unlistenable at this point, or it's very rough. Thankfully, we did a video about this. And if you've never lived in the South, <laughs> which was me up until March of last year when we moved here, you learn about humidity in ways that you never learned before. Like, it, we have dehumidifiers going. I grew up with humidifiers. Having asthma as a kid, it was very important to not let my lungs get too dried out. Here it's the opposite problem. We have dehumidifiers all throughout the house and they pump out incredible amounts of moisture. Like, like you dump it down the drain. This water just comes out of the air. By the way, if you ever wonder how a dehumidifier works, I'm sure you have. It's, it's a refrigerator but it has the uh, the part of this of the refrigeration system missing that a regular refrigerator does, and that's the part that takes the condensation out and um, you know dissipates it or gets stores it or gets rid of it or whatever. Um, it literally condensates the air and the water out of the air in, into a, a vessel that you dump out. That's how it works. So yeah, we got those going. We also got these things that we hang up in the closets. They're like a bag of this white powder and a clear pouch. And eventually the pouch fills up with water. We have these little plastic tubs that we put in closets and all throughout the house. And they're constantly absorbing things. It's hard to get, keep your stuff dry here. So if you live in a climate like that, having paper discs is going to lead to bad things. <clears throat> Speaking of paper discs, here's another one. This one, as you can see by the shine, there is an intact. This is just a cheap, kind of like a cereal box record. Created by Walt Kelly, Storybook Record Company Limited. You can see somebody's really kind of damaged the spindle hole there. I don't know if I've shown this. I need to before it destroys itself because it'll probably absorb, absorb the uh, moisture and crack as well. I know this is super random, you guys. Thanks for just showing you what's on my mind right now. 
there anything else here we're talking about? Not really. Okay, so anyway, yes, all that to say I've got – that's my one and only Michael Jackson pick to get. You guys ever like to just look at records and talk like that? I love doing that. Okay. Paul says, space. I'm always having to shuffle space for new records and CDs. Me too. But I'm also needing to shuffle space for new tech. Me too. Just recently obtained a three by five disc, three five disc CD changers. Bought, but not all of them were working. Wow. I love a five disc changer myself. My, my daily driver CD player is this. Sony CDP CE345. It's like a 1998 era, which is like the pinnacle of compact disc player technology. It got, you know, it kind of peaked late 90s and early, early 2000s before, you know, we declined into this world we live in now with unknown brand CD players and things, which isn't all necessarily bad, but the years of Sony Panasonic and, you know, ruling the roost are over. In fact, I was feeling very nostalgic the other day. I remember going to Circuit City and seeing their their portable CD player section was up front. It was the popular thing. So their half the store was CDs, and they had this massive section, a couple of rows, two or three rows of just just all these CD players on display, the portable ones, the little personal ones. And man, I love that era. I would like to see if there's some pictures online of it. I couldn't find anywhere. But yeah, that's my daily driver. Now, I never had a five disc changer growing up. So this isn't like a nostalgic thing as much as I just like the five disc changer. Not because I want to put on five discs and listen to music for five hours, but because I just think it's cool. <laughs> I could totally get away with a single disc player, um, but I just like having it. It's fun. And sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll let it play through a couple of discs while I'm working. As I have said before, I work here as well as do the show from here. So this desk I'm sitting in, is my workspace in more ways than one. My Wyatt says, do you like Michael Jackson vinyl records? Absolutely. I just showed the, the seven inch single, the picture disc we looked at a little while ago. I would love to get more Michael Jackson. Absolutely. James says, most of these records are from my childhood, like late sixties and seventies. That's awesome. Now working perfectly with little effort and cost. Wow. You know, I've noticed, you know, as I was trying to find one of these, I went through a few. All of this was documented on the channel. Um, I had a Symphonic brand, which was really good. It was a, it was nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I went through a very weird micro phase. This is the sine wave of how short. This is time. This is the duration and the intensity of the uh, weird phase I went through. A couple, two, three years ago on this channel, I uh, decided that I didn't need a separate tuner, a separate CD player, a separate cassette deck, that what I really wanted to do was get back my old Iowa shelf system I had from the 90s and one record player hooked up to the aux input. And, maybe, and I did keep the mini disc uh, JE510 I've got down here. That's a headache for another day. It's never been working right fully. Um, but anyway, the Symphonic, I donated it when I was going through that purge. And when I decided, what am I doing? I want that thing back. I ended up getting this Sony, which is a better deck, even though it doesn't have the, the, uh, the almost said the receipt. Definitely doesn't have the receipt. Didn't have the remote uh, when I bought it. Still doesn't have the remote. The Symphonic, I did buy the remote for, so I had the full functionality. And it was good. I would totally get that thing again. But um, the Sony is, is a better one, absolutely. If this is the model right before, um, like I think two or three years later, they introduced one with a USB. So this is before that. It's like 98. Um, but yeah, I went through that whole phase. Um, and I remember, you know, to your point, sorry, I'm trying to read and think at the same time. It's too much for my puny mind. Um, I remember the few of the ones that I looked at, including a very old Sony from like 1990, required lubrication at a minimum and take off old grease, put on new grease, uh, sometimes they need belts or the belts are loose. And usually once you get them lubricated and contacts cleaned and you dust the tray, 
in my experience, you can get them working. The exception being I had a problem with the transport of that old, old Sony I had. But it was my first five disc changer, so I was excited to have it. So that's cool. I'm glad you got them working, Paul. That's really neat. Which one is your favorite? Later on, I found a Yamaha disc exchange, and it was it wasn't one of the six disc changers that I don't know who makes this. Some company made six disc one. Like, oh yeah, you got a five disc changer. Well, we've got a six disc changer. Uh, but it was a five disc changer by Yamaha. And if you don't know this already, I'm absolutely enthralled with my Yamaha Natural Sound KX390 tape deck. It's a thing of beauty. Although I did find out the GX or the GF head does not mean it has a glass ferrite head. I used to think it had a glass ferrite head. It does have an immaculate head, but it's just an incredible, like it's got a play trim controller, Dolby B and C. Um, not a huge Dolby S fan, but the uh, Natural Sound series by Yamaha are, hold on one second, guys. Do, 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 do. The, sorry about that. The uh, Yamaha Natural Sound series products were tuned by audio engineers for classical music to sound optimal. So they're tuned for that sound. And when I saw the CD player, this is after I got the Sony, I picked it up because it's like 10 or 12 bucks at a thrift store. And I was, it was wonderful. It was great, but it wasn't quite as fully featured as the Sony. I ended up passing it along to my dad. Kept the Sony instead of the Yamaha Natural Sound. It looked good on the shelf with it because they're both, you know, the same, you know, brand. I also learned the hard way, by the way, if you ever picked up, I got, careful with these things, they go flying. Um, I picked up this Pioneer rack, very 90s wood grain, um, a couple of years ago, and I, I did not realize this. Now, I come from a background of professional broadcast, IT. I spent a lot of my life in a data center. I've worked with racks both in television, production, as well as IT for many, many years. But I did not realize that there was a disparaging difference between the width of different brand equipment. So this Pioneer rack, I can't fit certain things in here. Like there's certain record players that don't fit in here. Like the Technics SLD I want <coughs> way too wide. The Yamaha deck does not fit in there. That's why I've got something on top. I've got, you know, so it's holding a few things. It's also acting as shelving. Um, but yeah, the five disc changers, I love them. Absolutely love them. All right. Um, let me get caught up on comments here. And we will wrap it up in a little bit. I just want to say thank you guys for being there, by the way. The freeze is worse than Valentine's Day 2021. I've heard it's a really bad one. All jokes aside, stay warm. Be careful out there, especially driving on that stuff. Old radios, I got more prints on cassette than anything else. Interesting, you're a Prince fan. I guess he has to have some things. David, welcome in. Picture is it's hard to find. DJ Smudge's channel. A friend that used to own a bar gave me about 2,000 jukebox 45, mostly country, western 60s to 90s. Taking me forever to clean them, but I'm having a good time going through them. That's awesome. If you find any Patsy Klein, let me know. Any email. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you have. I got country 45s from the 90s. When I was just going through that stack of 45s, I have my one of the last kind of years of 45s, like a 1990 45 with a barcode on it. Mid roller. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, the, the mid rolls, they kind of took over control. I'd set it to the most minimal setting possible. Six Rhyme, welcome in. Astro Josh, welcome in. I would love to have a picture disc, says YouTube knob. You know, I, um, it was a while before I picked one up. Finally, they're fun and they they sound good. Listen to your forty. Listen to your forty five. Listen to your picture discs. There's nothing wrong with listening to them. They sound good. They have a little more crackliness than a regular vinyl record, but they're fine. They're absolutely fine. Michael Jackson's Bad and Thriller vinyls. I would love to pick that up. Yeah, that disc looked rough, didn't it? <laughs> near mint. Yeah, that's near mint cracked, if that's what you're talking about. 
Can't stand muggy either. Yeah, it does get muggy here. French Vinyl Addict, welcome in. A lot of folks in here. I really appreciate you guys being here. Please get the Polar Express Vinyl. I love that album. I've got it on CD. I would love to have that. Circuit City, yeah. Only a five-disc player. Try 110. I had one of those carousel players that had like the 500 discs. It was a DVD one. Was it a DVD? I think it was a DVD one, but I used it as a CD changer. And what ended up happening is I happily loaded in all my CDs. And then I realized, where, where are they? I have no idea. So I had to make a list of this album on this number. And then it, it was just lame having this like sheet of paper to have to find where my CD was. It was cool watching that thing go around. I think it was, it's a cool it's a cool device. I think it'd be really good for like movies maybe, more so than for music, at least for me. Uh, what I want on vinyl is quite expensive, so I will wait for it. One record I want to pick up at some point is there's a new release of the Patsy Cline Greatest Hits album that's on a kind of a powder pink vinyl. My uncle just gave me 200 plus LP, so excited to hear it. Wow, that's a, quite a quite a haul. The last 90s 45s will have jukebox only printed on them. Interesting. My favorite one he gave me so far is Queen, News of the World. My friends, I've got to run. But I want to tell you thank you so much for being there, uh, for being there today, but just in general for being there. Again, check out the link in the chat. Go over and subscribe to Rain's Place, my wife's channel, and uh, follow along on our adventures there. And I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, and the show for Recordology again tonight, probably tomorrow I'm thinking at this point. Uh, but check that out because we did some super fun vinyl hunting, record hunting, CD hunting today you will hopefully want to see. But my friends, that's going to do it for today. So happy record, honey, and we'll see you next time.